Hey boss babe, welcome to Build Your Brand. This is Cassie Causey here and I'm so excited that you have decided to build a business empire with me. I am super stoked that you decided to choose me as your influencer and today's training is all about really focusing and building your brand. So you will notice that this training comes with a printable uh, worksheet that you will find the link to print below this training. So make sure that you go ahead and do that before we get started um, because that's going to help you walk through this exercise here um, and help you actually build your brand and what it's going to look like for you. So um, as we get started, um, <clears throat> I really want you to stop and focus about what it is that you want your brand to look like and uh, it's going to be about you. So what a lot of people do and make a mistake about when they start their business, um, when they're in direct sales or network marketing is that they actually start branding their company um, and their company products instead of actually branding themselves. So what I'm gonna be showing you is actually how to brand you and um, one of the things that I do want you to pay close attention to that I do reference the word company and I reference the word business through my training. So when I reference the word company, I'm referencing the company that you actually joined in your direct sales marketing um, career. And when I reference the word business, that's actually your business, the business that you're growing um, when you're with that company. So uh, I hope that makes sense for you. So let's go ahead and get started and jump right in. And I hope that you have that printout ready and handy for you. Um, I will pause throughout this training uh, as we walk through this, <clears throat> excuse me, to help you walk through uh, or to help you get through this training. I think that it's beneficial that we walk through this together uh, as we start building your brand. So one of the things that we'll get started here is why is branding so important? Y you see branding around you everywhere. Uh, you know, it's in the clothes that you wear, it's in uh, the food that you eat, it's the car that you drive, it's just simply everywhere around you. So it actually helps to identify who you are and what you're all about. So, you know, just um, on the worksheet that you have there, um, you know, just stop and think about how do you want others to identify with you. So this is, um, you know, people brand themselves, companies brand themselves, businesses brand themselves, because that's how clients, um, their audience quickly identifies who they are. Um, it also builds trust and loyalty with their customers, with their audience, um, because, uh, you know, they, they simply... Um, have that loyalty with their clients. So if you, you think of, um, you know, the, the brand that you wear in clothing style or um, maybe the coffee you drink, you know, you start to become loyal to that, that brand because you, you trust in them to give you that same quality of product every time that you go. Uh, also, it makes it gives a professional look and it creates creates that credibility um, with uh, the product or, or the brand that that you get. So you know, in thinking about you and what you want to portray, um, <clears throat> how do you want others to look at you and and view your you as your brand. So um, thinking about your profession, professionism, excuse me, and um, your credibility, how do you want others looking at you um, as you're thinking through your brand? Also recognition, you know, it, it helps uh, others, your audience quickly recognize um, your, your product very quickly and who it belongs to. So, you know, if you were to see that same cup of coffee sitting on a table and it was branded, if 
uh, with your logo, you would know quickly who it belonged to. So, you know, if we take Starbucks, for example, if you had two cups of coffee sitting there um, <clears throat> and the content inside of the, the cup, um, on the outside of the cup, if it was branded with, um, you know, Starbucks logo, you would quickly know, hey, that belongs to Starbucks, right? It's just simply because of the logo. So it, it creates that recognition very quickly and you know what kind of quality you're going to get. You know um, what what it's going to provide to you. So it creates that trust, that loyalty, and um, it, that recognition pretty quickly for, for the audience. So you got to think about, you know, what do you want to attract uh, your audience to? So as you're thinking through your brand, you know, you want to think about how do you want others to identify with you and how, how do you want them to view you? And also, would you attract you to you? So that's something you really want to stop and think about as you're thinking through your branding. When you join direct sales, all of the direct sales companies have their own branded distributed website. And every single person in that company gets that same website. So every member of that company has the exact same website. And so one of the things that I coach and teach is to create your own branded website that your audience can be attracted to and recognize and that uniquely identifies who you are, that builds trust and loyalty with your audience, credibility and professionalism with you instead of with the company because it's going to make you stand out above everybody else that's already with that company. So it's going to uniquely identify who you are, redirect people from your company's brand to your brand, if that makes any sense. So instead of your audience being directed to your company, redirect them to your brand and attract them to you and what you have to offer. Okay, so... And exactly what I was just saying, stop branding your company and your company's products and just simply start branding yourself. And so usually when people join a direct sales company, that's the first thing that they do. They immediately start posting products from that company and say, hey, buy here, buy now, buy from me, um, instead of branding themselves. And that's simply something that gets them in trouble because it's very spammy and that's something you definitely don't want to do. What you want to do instead is create curiosity about what you have to offer um, and some of the things that you want to do as you're starting to brand yourself or, you know, in some cases for some of you guys, you're starting to rebrand yourself. Uh, you want to actually review your social media platforms. Um, so as you're going through this, and this is going to take you guys by shock, uh, and it's going to make you scratch your heads a little bit, but trust me, trust the process. This works um, as you're starting to brand yourself because it's going to create credibility for you People are going to start to trust what you're saying. They're going to come uh, to you. So instead of you having to go and find clients, people are going to start being redirected to you instead. Um, so as you're going through and looking at your social media platforms, you know, start creating that curiosity and start having people come to you and remove your company name, remove your logo. You know, if your page says you know, um, presenter with such such company or independent um, presenter with this, you know, remove that, you know, remove your company name and logo. Also create that professional, you know, look and that brand on your page. So update that profile picture, that cover. You know, if you have um, your dog up there, you know, people aren't being attracted to your dog, although your dog is really cute and super, super adorable. But you want to make sure that they are attracted to you. They know who you are. Um, <clears throat> so make sure you have a picture of you um, somewhere on your profile. So it needs to be on your profile picture and uh, on your cover, or at least it has 
uh, something in there about what you have to offer. And, um, <clears throat> you know, you need to have that message in there that portrays what you're going to be providing to your audience. Also, update that about me section. So some of the questions that I get a lot is, especially when you're first starting in direct sales or uh, network marketing is, should I use my personal profile? If you guys are on Facebook, should I use my personal profile? Should I create a uh, new page? And um, this this really makes people struggle a lot. And so what I what I recommend is when you're first starting, I would use your personal profile page, but you do have to be very cautious about this because it is against Facebook policy to sell or promote your business on your personal profile. So if you're using your personal profile, you cannot put any links in your, um, when you're posting. Um, so if you're trying to add any kind of links or anything like that, it can be a link for something that's within Facebook. So like a link to a group or something like that. But if it's an outside link to a website or anything like that, it cannot be within the post. But you can put it in the comments. So if you're posting something, you can put in there, say, link in comments and then put the link in the comments. And do that. And the reason why I say do that, you're going to want to do that for just a little while until you build up some of that credibility, uh, build up some of that curiosity and start gaining some of that following. And then you're going to create your page, your business page, and start redirecting people over to your page. Um, because <clears throat> you're following your audience is on your um your personal wall to begin with and you want to gain that credibility first because you are starting something new and that's where your audience is and then you can redirect them over to your page but you do want to have a page eventually because you are a professional and you do want to gain additional audience and that's where you're going to do it at that's where you're going to brand yourself and grow that audience so I do recommend you do eventually have have that page but when you're first starting you're going to have your personal um, you're going to gain that audience right there on your personal wall so you're going to have an about me section on your page and you're going to want to make sure you have a good about me section and when you update that section do not be salesy do not be like oh buy for me this is amazing this is why i started da 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 and if you guys want an example go to my page and kind of look at what i have there you can go to my website truecolorsbycassie.com you guys know where to find me you guys found me here um and kind of look about what my about me section is um but do not be salesy uh, that is not what I uh, show and teach and, and promote on my business. Remove all negativity, you guys. I do express this a lot. Uh, people are following you. You are branding you and your lifestyle. Um, even on your personal wall, your page, do not be negative. Do not promote negativity. Do not post negativity. If you have negative things on your wall, on your page, um, you you are showing that you are a negative person and people do not follow negativity. Um, they follow positive things. There are enough negativity in the world. We do not need to be encouraging negative things um, about our business. Um, so I really encourage positive things. Um, and I do have um, uh, affirmations that I encourage and that's something that um, you know, if you struggle with, you know, stress in your life and you feel like things just aren't going your way, I encourage that you practice affirmations and you can download a free um, <clears throat> example of powerful affirmations that uh, will help you understand what affirmations are and how you can um, use those in your daily life to to promote encouragement um, but do do post and um, show positivity things or positive things on your page and on your wall because that's what people will be attracted to um, also and something and I've already said this but but use a branded website so I do encourage that you do not use 
your company's um, will, uh, website and promote that because that's what everybody else in that company is doing and everybody else has that same thing because when people go to your that company website it looks just like everybody else's in the company and how can they differentiate yours from Sally Sue's so what I show is use your own branded website and so if you go to my website um, you cannot you don't even know what company I'm with so it, it creates some of that curiosity um, and then I can promote um, as I choose to uh, and um, <clears throat> I am branding myself versus my actual company so if something happened with my company I'm um, sorry yeah, with my company, then I could change up my company, but still brand myself. And um, nobody can take my website away from me. Nobody can take that away from me. So um, that's what I encourage and promote. And then as you're looking at this, as you're looking at what you're branding and branding yourself, I want to, it's very important to know, like, are you someone that would attract you? Okay. So, um, and, and, you know, looking at your worksheet, I do have that kind of checked off there and, and make some notes as we're going through this to help you as you work through what you currently have on social media. And don't be discouraged if you have some of these things already on your page, like negative comments, because, you know, we, we do get things like we all have bad days you guys and sometimes we vent on social media and that's okay um but but just be careful what you say and how you say it and you, you can always turn something that's negative into a positive thing um and then post it you know like you know if I wake up and you know like I stumped my toe and you know the kids woke up late and I was late to school you know just you can turn it into a positive thing like um, just think through it and how you, you post it on social media because everybody has a bad day, but people can be attracted to you because of how you handled that, okay? Now, let's think about your brand name. This is something that so many people struggle with. Trust me, I know. Um, it was one of those things that took me forever to figure out what my name was going to be, but you guys, it can be as simple as using your name, just simply use your name. Um, and this is where um, I should have totally just used Cassie Causey. How many Cassie Causeys are there out there? Not many. And um, it's something that will stick to people. Um, it is you that you are branding, remember? And the only reason why I use True Colors by Cassie is because I had already branded that. People knew me, True Colors by Cassie. Um, my website was True Colors by Cassie. Everything was True Colors by Cassie. So it would have been a really big struggle to um, rebrand to just Cassie Causey. So uh, we kept True Colors by Cassie. But if you're really struggling, you guys, I mean, simply just use your name because you are branding you. That is who you are. Um, that is how people know you. Use your name. But if you simply just cannot use your name or you already have something um, that you just really, really love, um, make sure that it's easy to remember because if you run into somebody at the grocery store and they want to know your business, um, they need something that they can easily remember so that when they go back home, they're like, "Who? what was her business name? Oh, yeah, 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 this is what it was. So you want to make sure it's easy to remember. You want to make sure that it's short because short equals easy to remember. Um, and then, you know, run it by some friends and family. Ask them what they think. Um, you can also ask them if you're struggling with something. Ask them what they think most about you. Um, and then after you get your name, <clears throat> you're going to want to um, come up with kind of like a, a tagline or, or like a slogan, something that's really going to stick with people. Um, so as you're thinking through this, <clears throat> you're going to want to think about who your audience is, who you're wanting to attract, um, what are their needs and problems? So one of the things as you are, um, you know, promoting or marketing to people, um, I don't teach, you know, being uh, salesy or spammy. Instead, you want to market to people by offering solutions. And by offering solutions, you got to understand what their needs and their problems are. So, um, you know, really think about who you are wanting to attract, who your audience is. Think about 
what their their age are, what their age is, um, <clears throat> what their lifestyle looks like. You know, where do they shop? What do they do for a living? Um, do are they homeowners? Um, you know, what kind of uh, coffee do they like? Uh, what does what does their budget look like? Um, are they big spenders? Um, where do they do their shopping? Um, what kind of problems do they have? How, and then um, how what kind of solutions can you provide for them? How can you uh, resolve their problems? So you got to think about you know what can you offer your audience, and then um, that's going to uh, help you with your tagline. So. For, for my tagline, um, it is that I empower women to find confidence in their true beauty, but I also, or, or excuse me, I help them um, find confidence in their true beauty, and I let it shine, to help them let it shine outwards, uh, but I also teach false babes how to design the lives that they deserve, so just think about um, pulling like all that together by identifying your audience um, and helping them with the solution to their, their problems. Okay, so <clears throat> now we're going to think about our brand image, okay? So as you're, you're thinking about your brand image, so you've already identified your, your name, all right, and your tagline. So we're going to think about what our brand actually looks like, okay? Now, if you think about Cassie and True Colors by Cassie, um, if I asked you what my colors were, you would probably know what those are pretty much off the bat. So my colors are purple and teal. Those are my favorite colors. They stick with me. They bring me joy and happiness. I love those colors. Those speak Cassie 110%. So you got to think about what colors bring you joy? What colors bring you happiness? What colors speak you? Um, when people see those colors, they truly think about you. And to help you with these colors, um, it could be your favorite colors. You know, um, these colors, when people see these colors, they immediately think about you. Um, they bring you joy. They bring you happiness. Um, they, they really um, make you very, very happy. Um, we already talked about them presenting you, um, and you also got to think about your audience, right? You want to think about how you want to make your audience feel when they see these colors. Um, maybe it's the, the products that you're offering, the business that you're in, um, you know, if you're in the health and wellness, uh, the beauty, um, how do you want to make them feel happy, relieved, uh, kind of thinking through um, what you want to represent. And to help you with this, you know, if you're struggling with this and you're not quite sure what your favorite color is, you know, one of the exercises you could do is go take a look in your closet. If you take a look in your closet and you see um, mostly the color blue or mostly the color red, um, that might actually be the color that you're most drawn to. Or if you take a look around your house, um, you know, you can kind of see, hey, um, I'm really drawn to uh, purple for whatever reason. And just kind of jot some of those colors down. If you're, if you're really wanting to um, show um, maybe more of a relaxed, calming feel, you know, look at some of the blue tones or something like that. And <clears throat> now you want to think about, okay, well, what is my style? You know, what kind of um, style do I really want to, to represent and um, <clears throat> and show? So as you're brain brainstorming through this, you know, kind of think about, you know, what are some of my, my hobbies and, and passions? What do... Uh, people say most about me, um, you know, do I like, uh, like for me, for example, I love my coffee. I'm a big coffee drinker. And for example, um, people know that I, I love my coffee so much that when they see a picture or they see a meme about coffee, they will forward it to me like on Facebook and say, hey, I saw this and thought about you, Cassie. It reminded me of you. Um, I, I also love my wine. 
um, I'm a wine drinker, so they will, if they see something that reminds them of me, they're going to forward it to me and say, hey, I thought about you. Um, so you got to think about that, you know, what reminds people of you. Um, and also, you kind of think about, um, you know, what kind of fashion style are you or even um, design style looking around your home do you like more of a contemporary style are you more edgy um, are you more laid back or playful you know kind of thinking through those things and then thinking through what what kind of impression do you really want to to leave people with what do you want what do you want to be known for um, you know for me I you know, I guess it's my coffee. It's like I have to have my coffee. My coffee is my my jumper um, and, and beauty. Um, so um, next, I'm going to kind of walk through how to create a logo, um, a couple of different resources. And, and these, I'm going to give you guys links below on, on how to um, use these or, or get access to or the links to these, my gracious. And um, so there's a couple of different things that you can do. So if, as you create your brand, your logo, because with your brand, you need a logo, you guys. Um, that really makes you stand out from others. You can create your own and there's different resources and tools out there that you can use. Or you can uh, hire somebody else to do it for you. Um, I love the tool Canva, um, but I'm going to show you different ways that you can, and Canva is free. You can use it for free. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show you a quick way to do it. And also when you're creating your own website and you can create a free website at Wix and I'm going to give you, um, the link, uh, below where you can do that at, but when you create your own website at Wix, excuse me. <clears throat> They have a, a way that you can create your own logo as well. So it's, pr it's pretty awesome. Um, if you want to hire someone, the person that I use, Mackenzie Cook, she's really great. I love her style, um, her uniqueness, and she really makes it stand out. <clears throat> um, and she's she makes an offer with, she has a, or a discount code. If you use the discount code Cassie's Training, uh, you get $5 off the logo and the watermark. The difference between a logo and a watermark, a logo has a white uh, background to your your lo your logo um, the watermark has a transparent background so one thing to remember when you're creating a logo is that you do want to have a transparent background so that you can add your logo on top of an image or a picture or something else and then um, you know, it, it doesn't have that white background or anything like that on top of it. So, um, keep watching because I'm going to show you how to create one in Canva. If you want the transparent background, um, you do have to purchase, I think it's like, um, you do have to, sub to subscribe, but what you can do is they give you like a 30 day trial, um, and then you can cancel that 30 day trial. So one of the great things about Canva is that when you go in here, there is all kinds of templates that you can um, select in here. And if you, uh, let's see, we're just going to scroll through here and we're going to browse all and we're going to um, go right here to a logo. And it gives you all kinds of ideas right here. And you can just change your font here. And you can select any kind of font um, up here. You're going to select your font. Uh, <clears throat> let's do something like that. And you can play around with it. Um, they have different tools over here on the left side. So uh, if you want to add another text field, you can. Um, the elements are here and you can add, they have lots of free different images. So let's say like um, for me, I love coffee. So I want to do a coffee 
image. Some images you have to pay for, some are free, so let's use the coffee. I'm going to do a coffee image. And let's get rid of this. I'm going to delete that, get rid of that image. Let's do um, a paint swish. Let's do the swish. Nope, I have to pay for that one. Let's do the. Let's do that one. That one's free. Let's do that one. And over here, you can change the color. Since I let's do teal. And you can select it. And up here, you can change the position and send it backwards. There we go. All right, and then, so the backdrop, if I were to download this now, okay, um, the backdrop would be white, okay, but I'm going to download, and if I click transparent backdrop, then it is going to be transparent, so I'm going to download this, okay, download that. All right, so now, let's just say, um go home. Let's just say I am making a social media post and this post, let's just say something like this and I want to use my logo that I just downloaded. <clears throat> Here's my logo. You can see that it's transparent. Boom, there it is. There is my logo. So there it is. I just branded myself. How amazing is that, you guys? Pretty awesome, right? So there you have it. I hope that you guys are excited. I hope that you got value from this. You learned something. You put it into motion. So as with all tools, um, they are useless unless you put action behind it. I always like to end all of my training with a little quote. So don't wait for opportunity, you guys. Create it. So make sure that you share your new brand logo in my free Facebook group, Building a Business Empire. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know what you took from this. Um, let us know how we can better help you. Um, let us know how it's going. And congratulations on taking the next step for building your business empire.